uh, all of a sudden, all of the pots and pans to our left and our right just kept clanking and falling and flying off the thing. And I grabbed onto the back of Tango's shirt. <laughs> I did have this true story. And I was like, Dave, we got to turn that light off. And he's like, I'm not going. I'm like, we have to. This is a very momentous, momentous occasion. Oh, That's a big oh, word yes. because momentum, momentum, well, <laughs> moment, was... Mentos, the fresh maker. Yeah, fresh maker. Uh, at this time, he, this is a five time guest, Danica. We are so I'm thrilled so to please. Yes. <laughs> so welcome back to the stream, the one and only Steve Gonzalez. <laughs> <laughs> Five times, huh? I wow. know. I know. You get all the Mentos. Congratulations. You've made nice. it. Those things are so delicious. <laughs> are they? <laughs> yeah, of course. Come on. I don't yeah. think I've ever had a Mento. Hmm. I'm sure we did back when those were a thing. Yeah. When it was like the big thing to put them inside the, the Coke bottles and then yeah. they explode and science is great. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, welcome, Steve. We're so glad to have you back with us. Thank you. Uh, it's been a little while. It's nice to see you guys. Yeah, it's thank girls. you so much. Yeah. <laughs> so kind of just to start, one of the things that we think is really, really super exciting is that you are now part of the Discovery Plus family, which includes shows like TLC, a &E, Food Network, all of my favorite things. And I definitely think that the future is streaming. So what are you looking forward to the most by being on the new streaming platform? Oh, that's a good question. You know, it, it's what I like about it is it's, you know, television sort of on, you know, their time, your time, my, my time, you know, so uh, say our, our show or, or, you know, Ghost Nation, uh, Kindred Spirits, whatever the show uh, may be, uh, it's there, you know, it comes on Saturday, it's there in the morning. And so if you want to watch it at 12 noon, you can, if you want to watch it at 4 p.m., you can, if you want to watch it at midnight, you can, it's no big deal. Uh, you're not bound to that, you know, air time. Uh, that's pretty cool. And then you can, you know, watch as many as, as you want. Um, the library they have is is pretty intense, you know. So uh, I've been my, my own mother has been like, "Did you see that they have this show on there?" Like, yes, mom, <laughs> very, very well aware, you know. Oh um, yeah. Uh, but it's cool to be, you know, uh, sort of the, you know, the, the ground level of something. Uh, it was something that, you know, none of us really knew would be would be happening, and we just got a phone call and said, "Hey, this is going on now," and we're like, "Oh." Okay, uh, let's uh, you know navigate those waters, and and we've been doing it with with everybody, you know. And um, one thing though is is it's it's all a family over there, and and so we we have the same, you know, network people that we're still dealing with. It's still a travel channel show, but uh, it'll be on Discovery Plus. Yeah. Well, what I love most is like I tend to watch things from my phone a lot, like if I'm at the gym or like just out and about. And so now, bonus for me, I can watch your show anywhere. An and app, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's an app. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, you can watch it on, I mean, just like a Netflix or any of those streaming services, you know, you can watch it on any, you know, anything that has that capability. So, okay, uh, so it's net. Netflix and chill. So what is it? Discovery plus. I don't know. Ooh, I'm not cool. go there. Uh, um, well, moving on. Um, <laughs> go ahead, Dan. Get away from that. So because Discovery Plus has so many options, are you binge watching any shows? Oh, uh, not yet. Uh, I haven't started any yet. It, it, uh, when it uh, released, I, I was traveling and. Um, haven't been able to dive in yet, but I'm going to. I'm going to catch up on everything that. Can you tell us some of the ones that are on your list? Oh yeah, of course. Um, I do want to uh, watch um, selfishly some of the older episodes of our show. Ghost Hunters is on Discovery Plus. Always. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, all of the Food Network shows. Uh, I want to catch up on you know diners. Drive-ins and dives and and uh, <laughs> yeah, the best show um, ever. All those good shows, and I'll get to check out you know some of the older uh, episodes of Expedition Unknown. I didn't get to see you know Josh Gates' show, and so there's a lot of things I have on my list that I am excited to uh, get to, and uh, I may actually start watching a lot of you know some of the, the paranormal shows. To be honest with you, because everybody's like, "Did you see this? Did you see that?" And it's like I, uh, you know, I'm 
I know them all. It's sort of what I do all the time. <laughs> you, um, don't say. you know, it's not it's not the first thing that any of us really go to, you know, but it'll be exciting now that it's all at, at my fingertips. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like now I know what everyone's talking about. I just, <laughs> Well, another thing that we know that you are a big fan of is Disney. So we kind of wanted to know if you could tell us a little bit about your love for Disney. How did that get started? And what are some of your favorite Disney things or shows or films, characters? <laughs> all encompassing. Everything. Tell us it all. Disney wow. question mark? This is one of the best questions I've ever been asked. Oh, fabulous. Um, <laughs> <Try>. <laughs> um, you know, I, I like it all. Uh, I, I really do. Everything from the movies uh, to the feature length cartoons, to the uh, shorts, you know, everything. Uh, but uh, the history and the culture, you know, there's a, a culture that goes along as silly as it sounds uh, with the Disney parks, you, you know, and, uh, you know, knowing everything and, and uh, I'm one of those people. You know, there are, there are a lot of us out there um, and uh, I'm one of them. Uh, I, I just love it. You know, it, it, there's a magic to it. There really is. You, you can go to Universal Studios, which I do many times. It's awesome, super fun, but it's a theme park, you know, a great theme park for sure. You'll have a blast there, uh, but you don't tear up, you know, as soon as you walk on the, you know, you don't get hit with a, a baseball bat of emotion uh, when you're walking down, you know, their sort of main corridor there, which, you know, at Disney they call Main Street. You know, but, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's just something to it and the magic. And, and you can, you know, some people do giggle at that, but there is a, a, a Disney magic. It's it's 100% true. It's tangible. You can feel it. It's only there. Um, and if you don't get it, you may not ever get it, you know. <laughs> so I'm trying to explain it to people. I'm like, you, you feel it, right? It's here. And they're just like, listen, man, can we go get like a coffee? <laughs> Well, I'm sure no. it's delicious coffee at, at Disney, oh, yeah. too. Coffee, you know, it's pretty good. Or Starbucks. They have Starbucks. Now. So, okay, I've never been to Disneyland, is it? Uh, the one in California. And yeah, obviously, yeah, with neither. everything going on in the world, it's on a temporary hold. Uh, but do you have a preference between Disney World or Disneyland? Well, um, Disney World, of course, 100%. Per percent. Uh, a lot of people that live in California and even some Disney purists would, you know, raise an eyebrow to that, of course, because Disneyland was the first Walt actually walked, uh, you know, those, you know, that's where he got his hot dog, his actual office is there, the, the whole thing, you know, um, and, and I understand that. But even if you were to compare Disneyland just to the Magic Kingdom, which would be a more fair comparison. Magic Kingdom is one of four of the major parks at Disney World, no big deal. But you know, one, of the, <laughs> one of the four, you know, that would be a pretty fair comparison. And maybe Disneyland would take that just out of charm. I'm not sure, but uh, when you encompass everything else. Uh, but Disneyland is a much different, you know, they have, uh, you know, the majority of their business are, are locals, you know, people that go all the time, annual pass holders. They're sure they get travelers, but the, the majority of their, where Disney World is the opposite. You know, it's people mostly vacationing and, and people going to Disney. So they're, they're there for a week, they're buckling in, they're there for a full, you know, experience. Uh, a lot of locals still, you know, Disney World, you, you see them, you know, and I, I envy them, you know, let's go, you know, to the California kitchen tonight for dinner, wherever you want, you know, who knows? I'm making things up. But. <laughs> that happens. That would be pretty cool. But uh, see, I, I like this question that Jane asked. I believe asking about Club Thirty Three. So, have you ever had the opportunity to go, Steve? Oh, no. Um, Club Thirty Three is, as everyone knows, very exclusive. You know, I, I know where the doors are. You know, but I, I, I can't. <laughs> you know. um, uh, Club Thirty Three. The, yeah, um, I, I know of it. I've never been in it. Um, uh, someday, maybe. Uh, I am a, a DVC, which is maybe below that a little bit. It, you know, you have, of course, Club 33 is, I think, what everybody, you know. But I hear it's just kind of like old money people, you know. Oh, okay. Like some well. funny duddies or something. You know. <laughs> maybe the food's good and you get some exclusive perks, but I don't know. I kind of want to party when I go. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. But I do have to say, I love fuddy duddy. That is a fantabulous oh, well, word. Uh, you know, 
Uh, and when I say party, I mean, you know, eat the churros and run around. And, and I don't want to put white gloves on. You know, I want to roll my sleeves yeah. up. And, you know. <laughs> Mickey Mouse bars. Oh, living. Uh, but uh, who am I kidding? Uh, Club 33, I, I would, of course, give an arm tomorrow to join. Sure. If you guys are watching at Club 33, which we know you are, longtime watchers of Talk Culture, Steve would like to visit. So just, just putting oh, that out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if there are any out there, please. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> Yes. Thank you. That was oh. a fun question. I love the parks. They're just, uh, you know, all of them. Epcot, Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom. Hall even Hollywood, St Hollywood Studios was a sleeper for me recently. Yeah. I remember who having a blast at Hollywood. Hollywood Studios has my favorite roller coaster. The rock and roller coaster is my oh, yeah. jam. That was Aeros really sweet. <laughs> so fun. So fun. And the Tower of Terror when I can actually bring my... That's the ride that I always get on. I'm like, I'm going to be fine. And then right before the drop, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah. but i'm curious to see if they're going to transform that into the guardians um ride as well so right yeah that would be really i mean i don't go on them because i'm afraid of heights there are some rides at disney i do um that have heights you know uh, but uh that one i i can't do but i will say if it makes you feel better i am severely acrophobic like i have a terrible fear of heights like can't stand on a desk and jump down safely oh, um I see. and i love tower of terror really <laughs> and yeah. even like the one at universal the dr doom drop one and i love roller coasters all that stuff like i think it's and i'm not a person that likes being scared but for some reason that situation i'm just like all right i'm in i'm all in <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to go because I know you can dip out at the end. It's kind of a thing. Like you can go through the line and they give you the option where you can just dip out this door. So I'm at the <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Oh, uh, yeah. Fair. Um, I believe in you. You can do it. Thanks. <laughs> Danica? Yes. Yeah, so uh, kind of going on the Disney theme. So are there any paranormal stories that you know about Disney that maybe some other people might not know about? Yeah, there are actually uh, quite a few. As many people know, uh, you know, uh, uh, and there may be zero attachment, right, in, in terms of the ashes. But most people know that many, many people desire to have their ashes spread all over Disney property, uh, you know. And there have been some that have been dumped in, uh, dumped around the Haunted Mansion and that sort of thing. And even so, there supposedly have been some grisly accidents, that sort of thing. But... Even, and this is a little side story, um, I won't go into it because I've probably told it a few times, but um, I was very fortunate enough uh, through a, a very nice uh, gal named uh, Heather and, and had, uh, the manager of the Haunted Mansion was able to be uh, an honorary caretaker one day, right? Which is was a dream come true, you know, it was fantastic. I couldn't believe it. But the manager comes out and she's like, come with me and, and brought me in the back door. And, and as I'm walking in, she said, you know, you need to come here and investigate. And she said, uh, there is a lot of things going on. The staff, you know, they don't want, you know, to really say much, but some of them won't go in certain doors. And in my head, of course, it's like, well, you're at the Haunted Mansion. You know, you got to, there's already that sort of vibe. So maybe there's a heightened awareness that maybe shouldn't be there. So they just kind of mm -hmm. think things are haunted. You know? yeah, yeah. Uh, it would be cool to, to go there and, you know, a lot of things uh, the, in the paranormal world, whew, excuse me, let me say that again uh, so you can understand my words. <laughs> in the paranormal world, uh, it can happen through, you know, strong emotional uh, directions, you know, whether it's a, a strong uh, love or a strong hate, a, a really traumatic event or a really loving event. So if you're somebody that is so in love with Disney, and there are a lot of people that are, you may want to visit there, or maybe you've never left. Maybe you, you know, who knows? So it is possible for sure. That was a, the longest answer for the shortest question ever. I love it. No, no, <laughs> not Valid. not at all. That's... So many people are like, I'm just going to X out of this thing. No, no, not at all. They're still joining. So <laughs> check back in in ten minutes. <laughs> so uh, just kind of asking about the ashes. Is that legal, or is that something that people do? Like, can you legally scatter ashes at um, a theme park, or is that 
I just out of curiosity, do you know? I, I don't know if it's technically illegal to be honest with you, but I do know Disney has publicly said that it is frowned upon. You know, it's more like a health hazard. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine. I just thing. have you know the image of of um. <laughs> sorry, oh God, <laughs> really bad. Uh, the the coffee can in um. Oh my God. There's words in there I'm somewhere. Sorry. In the coffee can. Jumping <laughs> around. <laughs> Oh my God, the movie. Up of the dude, the dude. Oh, uh, the Big Lebowski? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm just seeing the scattering of the ashes in that, and it's that's what I'm imagining happening at Disney, but like all over the place. <laughs> well, I, I don't think they just, you know, I, yeah. I think they're probably just, a little more discreet about it. Yeah, <laughs> they're probably just like, yeah. dropping it on like yeah, a little pinchy little. pinch. <laughs> okay, fair. If you, well, uh, noted. if you read any like Caitlin Doherty books or any of those like, you know, books about embalming, or uh, most likely uh, in anybody's urn, there's probably two or three or four people. It's not just mm. the person you think is is in there, you know, because at the end there's, uh, you know, a lot that doesn't get, uh, you know, certain bones and different things, and, and even sometimes the heart itself. Uh, so they put all of that stuff in a big grinder, just grind it up and throw it, you know, and so there's a, you know, in most urns, there's probably two or three different people so um interesting there are people I, you know at the haunted mansion that are like what am i doing here get right <laughs> i feel like no i feel like they would are you kidding me if your final resting place is the haunted mansion it ain't a, hasn't yeah. been a bad life, hasn't been a bad life. <laughs> so okay something else that danica and i wanted to ask about uh she and i recently went back and watched unsolved mysteries which is on mm -hmm. netflix and one of the stories features the belvedere hotel which i didn't know much about i don't know about you danica but are there any stories that you can tell us or ghost stories paranormal encounters about the belvedere uh, which which Belvedere? Which so I believe it's in Baltimore. I want to say that it's I wanna, yeah. I is think that it's where it was, Danica? Yeah, I think it was in Maryland. Okay. So base so so basically, the story that they tell on um, on Solved Mysteries was a gentleman went missing there. They found his flip flops on the top of the roof. There was a tiny small hole in the roof, and he was in this. Uh, like no one saw him go in and out. Um, there, he's not on any security cameras but basically the people at the belvedere say that the place is incredibly haunted okay i, I i'm not familiar uh, okay ooh. yeah let me uh write this down, down. <laughs> yes please, on, please this is, yes so it uh, is season one episode one i believe it's the very first episode you'll see they they really uh <laughs> they go for it and yeah it's about the belvedere hotel once again danica i think it was in baltimore it sounds right <laughs> Cool. Yes, let us Belvedere know, Steve. Hotel. Yes. Baltimore, Maryland. Yes. And the story is absolutely wild. I mean, that's yeah. just kind of that is I mean, the surface the mystery, of it. Mysteries abound because it is that is a weird, weird one. Yeah. Thank you. I, I mean, I wish I, I had a, enough, you know, knowledge in there to know every, you know, <laughs> no. but sadly. Uh, but I love learning about new ones because I'll I want to check them out. I want to learn into the history or look into the history and, and there's a, a whole romance there you know there is uh, with the the history of because you look in you know all of these places that are supposedly haunted or are haunted uh it's never just oh i'm haunted you know there when you do <laughs> <haunted. laughs> nice to meet right. you <laughs> there usually is some sort of a story behind it and i don't mean romance like it's not always a love story you know uh, romance more in the sense of just this this you know, this lore that grabs you and brings you in that you want to know more about. And, and sometimes it's tragic. Uh, sometimes it's murderous. Uh, sometimes it is about love and devotion, but uh, there's always some kind of cool, really awesome story behind it all. So anytime somebody can tell me about a new haunted place, it's, it's exciting. Because even if the ghosts aren't there, you know, because sometimes they might not be. Uh, you got to really be into the, the other stuff about it. Sure. Mm. Fair enough. All right, we're going to switch gears a little bit here. So uh, we were wondering if you could tell us about your time as a former police officer. Um, oh. And so the first question that I wanted to ask is, has your work as a police officer informed your ghost hunting? Like, are you more cautious or I, however you want to take that? Sure. Yeah, that's a, a great question. Um, police work, a, a lot of fun. You know, it, it really is. It, it can be. 
you know, a lot of uh, stress involved with it, of course. Um, but it's not stress in, in the moment. You don't really think about it. It's stress after uh, after the fact, you know. Um, it, it was a, a, a rewarding uh, job, of course, in, in the sense that you are serving. You really are. And you are protecting. A lot of people give the cops a lot of... Um, but they're really the only reason people aren't breaking into your house and taking everything you have. They are the reasons that people aren't being taken advantage of physically, mentally, uh, uh, in, in all of these different ways. I mean, they, they are adding to a lot of problems right now, for sure. We all see it. Uh, but by and large, you know, it's a, it's a profession that, that can be very rewarding. Uh, it can be stressful in the terms that you're seeing a lot of things that you know, you see once, sure, it's shocking, you see, but after a while, it, it sort of builds up, you know, and not just dead things and people, but uh, just people in pain, you know, emotionally, physically, uh, people in duress, it, it's sad, and, and, it, and it's awful, and, and you deal with that, and you take that home, you'd find yourself a few days later being like, man, I wonder what that kid's up to, you know, who fell off his bike, and, and all this happened, yeah, you know, and, and you found out later that he's been beaten up by his dad, and all that stuff, you know, you, you think about those things, and uh, so that that part of it, it you know, it, it is really cool. Uh, police work was a, a fun thing. Um, I wasn't a cop necessarily. The two different things, which a lot of people aren't quite sure. Like you can be a, a police officer without being a cop, but you can't be a cop without being a police officer, which is interesting because a cop is community-oriented policing. That's very specific where you're kind of like, you know, walking the beat, you know, downtown New York City, and you're talking to people in shops and you're going in and you're figuring out who Freddie on the corner is and, and knowing who he's talking to and you're getting information from this person. You know, I was more so in, in a patrol car, you know, pulling people over and, and uh, doing, you know, breaking and enterings and calls to, to different things. Um, a lot of fun, small town, uh, but uh, <laughs> it was fun. And then uh, other things happened in life and uh, I was sort of forced to, switch uh, directions yeah so th this might be kind of a tough question to answer but what what would you consider to be like a scarier scenario like entering a home that you don't really know what's going on or entering a home that you believe to be filled with the paranormal oh that's a good question um but uh people 100 uh, the mm -hmm. physical world um you know uh, all, all day. Nobody's, you know, a ghost has never thrown a punch at me. You know, a ghost Yet. has never thrown yeah. a punch at me. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The night is young. Punchy yeah. ghosts are out there. Um, but, you know, most paranormal investigators I know, uh, including uh, Jason, uh, you know, uh, me, Tango, Amy Bruni, Chris Williams, you know, everybody I sort of hold uh, close and true in, in this, and, and everybody, you know, everybody I talk to in this world, We'll say that the living is is far more scary than than the, the paranormal. You know, the paranormal for us, uh, that's what we want. You know, to people who aren't really used to it happening to them, sure, it very could be very scary, and I, I do understand that. Uh, but to, for those of us who have been steeped in it for quite some time, uh, realize that it, it's just a bit of a song and dance you have to get used to, and and it can be startling, but then you switch gears right away to, oh, this is what I'm here for. Let's go mm -hmm. check this out, you know, and, and it becomes intriguing. It's like, you know, living history. And, and if we could take it and snare it and put it somewhere where we could look at it and say, look at you, I want to see what you're all about. You know, it wouldn't be at a, you know, a dungeon or something. It would be in like a, a natural history museum or a science museum. You know, it would be uh, something steeped in science and physical and energy and that sort of thing. It, it could, that, could also be ghostly, you know, it could be a ghostly phenomenon. I don't mean to dismiss it with science, because I do believe that that is possible, um, you know, but it wouldn't be something scary by by far and large, you know. You could go find that one or two scary things out there and, and you know, bottle that up, and then you would have something scary, but I hope they wouldn't do that, you know. We caught the demon, folks, you know, <laughs> come check him out. <laughs> Before he busts out of here, you know, like, that'd be a terrible, <laughs> we got one. <laughs> <Yeah. good tickets. laughs> no way. Uh, I also want to say that I like that you use the word snare because you're a drummer. So I just felt like that was very oh, fitting for the oh, sentence. Yeah. So. Thank you. Perpetual nice doom, see. check them out, guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Plug. Nice, so would you say that there is a danger 
in trying to provoke spirits or demons? Yes, uh, absolutely. Yep. Uh, I think one, if you are somebody who is of um, a mindset that you want to conjure demons to come into this physical world, you, you're already in, in a place that is probably pretty dangerous, you know, mm -hmm. demons aside, honestly. Um, so if you're somebody who is saying, I wish demons would uh, come here and, and do some nasty things, you know, talk to somebody, honestly, you know, and I'm, I love black metal. I've read the satanic Bible. I, I think Anton is a, a pretty smart fella, to be honest with you, you know, but um, I, I understand it. there's, a, you know, a separation there and that uh, <laughs> I can love black metal and, and hear those incantations and, the, you know, and whatever is happening. Um, but if I thought it really brought some demons to the world, just be like, oh, oh man. You know, you, yeah. you don't really want to mess with that. But, um, you know, is it just going to come? You know, if you're not seeking it out, uh, probably not. You know, it's not just going to be like, look at those folks. I'm going to go, you know, maybe it will. So, you know, <laughs> can, yeah. I mean, um, we do see, honestly, a lot of uh, case study that does suggest that somebody who isn't of sound mind um, that they will uh, maybe attach or try to attack them a little bit more because they're a little weaker to defend themselves, mm. uh, both mentally and, and physically. You know, sort of like uh, if, uh, you know, you're an animal hunting another animal, you may go after that that weak one limping in the back because it's, it's an easy kill. You know, you're going to have dinner tonight, you know. Um, mm. So there is a, a little bit of, of that, uh, but for the most part, uh, if you're not inviting it, it's not just going to come. Uh, you know, I, I do believe there are some nasty things out there. And uh, whether it has to do with demons or just something dark, um, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, but there does seem to be some things out there that don't like living people and don't want them here. Uh, you know. uh, if you're religious, call them demons. If you're not religious, then it's just, you know, it could be some jerk who is when they were alive as a person, you know, male or female, that still hates people and is like, get out of here, you know, just causing <laughs> havoc. I don't know. But, uh, you know, it's out there. If you go looking for it, you, you'll find it. You know, you will. Um, well, it's very rare, but you'll find it. Lauren wants to know if you think that children are targeted as well. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if they're targeted. Perhaps, uh, maybe, you know, because they would be um, a, a little more open to things in terms of they're not cut off. To, you know, they have no preconceived notions. They don't really interpret things like that as scary until they're, you know, introduced in that sort of way through whether it be cartoons or movies or TV shows. Um, you know, nobody is born being like, there's ghosts everywhere, I'm terrified. You know, it's just, you know, that's just not, it's, it's sort of a learned behavior, like most fears, you know. Uh, except for arachnophobia, they say that it comes in the womb, which is strange. Um, really? So, Do yeah. you experience spiders in a um, womb? I don't know. They say it's those like womb spiders, you know. Yeah. <laughs> very strange. Huh. Um, yeah. So huh. it, it can happen, but it, very, very rare. You know, very rare. If you're meddling with human spirits, um, you know, just uh, treat them as respectfully as you think you would want to be treated when you know you you were passed. Remember there. Were people's mothers and fathers and sisters and daughters and loved ones and husbands and wives and all of that stuff. And they've been through a lot more than we have. You know, they've died, which is, I think, about 90% of most people's fear. Uh, there's actually a book out there that talks on how uh, everything we do in life is just to, you know, forget about the fact that we are dying, you know, and that's a pretty intense thought, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's like, I'm only watching a movie, so thoughts of dying don't pop in my head, oh gosh, you know, it's right. very, I've, very I find morbid. that to be very valid. <laughs> I, I mean, that, that if you read that book, uh, it might open your eyes to some things, uh, but it's mm -hmm. scary, you know, that's a scary thought, it, it really is, um, and the more you think about that darker side of life, it can, you know, dig into you a little bit, but Fair. don't let it, don't dig too deep. You know? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, stuff, anyway. let's see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would you say is the most compelling evidence that you've seen that you or your team did not capture that was somebody else's evidence? Hmm. 
it's a great question. Um, there's a gentleman uh, named Lee who caught some thermal evidence once. It was pretty recently. On, I think it was in the beginning of season two of Ghost Nation. Um, and I actually tried to uh, disprove his thermal evidence, you know, not because I didn't trust him. He's actually a, a fantastic investigator and turned out to be, I, I, only, I think I only met him once before, but turned out to be a fantastic person as well. And, and uh, you know, uh, by trying to disprove his, and again, not because I want to, I'd much rather it be something, but uh, it's just, there's no use in, in fooling yourself or anybody else. It doesn't do the the, the the field any good it doesn't do your clients any good it doesn't do all it does is give you a little fun and, and gratification in the moment but that goes away and then you're left with who knows you know so you just want to be certain uh, but by trying to disprove his thermal evidence uh, I actually uh, kind of proved it you know and uh, and at one point he, he was such a gracious investigator because some some investigators can get mad at that you know and uh, I understand, you know, that it's they can hold on a pretty tight to their evidence, and and you know they're they're showing it to me, and and you know in a sharing way, and asking my opinion, you know, whether it be on the show or off the show, um, and some people do get quite angry, but Lee was like, "Wow, man, thanks. I, I think you may have figured it out. Wow," and then all of a sudden, I was like, "I don't know, man. <laughs> like, look at this, you know," and he was like, "Oh," and like by trying to disprove it, I actually proved it being a legitimate wow. piece of, of thermal evidence. So, um, you know, that thick headedness actually worked in our favor that time, but, uh, you know, kudos, big ups, props, whatever word you want to throw in there, uh, to, to him because, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the cool kids do. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Wow. Um, you know, because he, he, he took that uh, the way that, uh, I would hope you know, I would take it if somebody was disproving my, my piece of evidence, you know, very graciously and, and, and kindly, because science isn't about having the answer. Science is about figuring out the answer, you know, and any scientist, real scientist, I am not, you know, I'm not saying I am. I just try to think scientifically minded. I'm as far, you know, I'm a, a trained animal who can just recite things he's heard and learned. Um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, that's the, the point of it is not to have the answer, but, but to find the answer. And, and when you hold on and think that you have it and you this and that, then you're not open to what could be, you know, the answer. So um, huh. that was cool that he wasn't, you know, he was like that. And there are a lot actually through Ghost Nation. Um, I, I run into a lot of investigators and going back and forth with evidence. Um, you know, I end up uh, really learning a lot and, and actually, uh, proving some of the evidence and as being legitimate when uh, at first it's like, well, let me get to the bottom of this. It's like, oh, wow, this is actually pretty dang cool. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. um, but I'd say that's one that sticks out recently as one that I didn't catch that uh, has stuck with me as, as something really, really cool. Science. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> who, who does that song, Blind Me With Science? Oh, gosh. Um, yep. I, I no I, All right. Yeah. Fair I enough. like it though. <laughs> it's a good song. Tom Dolby? No. Maybe nope. that's it's very possible. The 80s. Hmm. Yeah, someone that, help that us could out be here. It. It's somebody fine. in the comments knows. I know. Really? I know somebody knows. It's, uh, it's all right. We'll out. Google it. <laughs> Look at that! I can press a button and see comments. Wow! So, uh, oh, all there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Tina wants to know what's the scariest entity that you've I encountered or overall experience that you've had, and I'm sure that there's been many. So maybe one that just you're thinking about Oingo Boingo. I don't think it's Oingo Boingo, but um, great, great band. We mm -hmm. love Danny Elfman. Mm -hmm. It's actually a, mm -hmm. a good guess. You know, it has that poppy sort of funky vibe that, and they play that song a lot at Halloween. Mm -hmm. I get it. I okay. Uh, the scariest entity I've, I've ever encountered. Thomas Dolby, you were right. Sorry. I was right. No, yeah, you, you did it. Yeah. Nice. Oh. <laughs> hmm. You both are like, no, no. no. <laughs> Never I know someone here knows. <laughs> I actually didn't know that was right, but it's, um, it's actually one of Steve. favorite songs. So I feel like that's how I remember it. Um, okay. Uh, what was the question? Um, the scariest entity you've encountered or experienced that yes. you've had. Thank you. Um, you You're know, a, a lot of times for me, it, it's not scary. You know, it's startling. Uh, but then it, it quickly kind of translates into excitement and fun and intrigue and uh, all of those other things. But 
the times that I have been like, whoa, there was one time, and Tangwin, I actually don't tell this story very often just because it seems so fantastic that it, unless you were there, it just doesn't even, it, it, my brain still, I have to like ask him, that really happened, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Um, uh, we were in this place uh, together, it was called Buckstead Manor. Uh, it's not, uh, doesn't exist anymore, sadly. Uh, but it was just me and him, uh, four or five in the morning. Uh, and the owner had actually said to us, um, lock up for me in the back. You know, just make sure you lock those back doors, whatever. And so uh, I'm going to cut it really short for, you know, because I don't want to just ramble. Because I, you you guys know, this is the fifth time now where I've probably done more rambling than you could. So I apologize. No, I'm going to no, try to no. cut it short. We, we, No, no, um, no. We love it. Um, but... Um, what was it? What was the question? Oh, um, yeah. um, so we're now, entity. yes, thank you. Um, and now we're, we're actually, you know, getting ready to leave. And, and all of a sudden we hear this voice we said, looked at each other. We're the only ones in here, right? Yeah, we, we know that it's not open. And the, the owner left and told us to lock the door. We saw him drive away, looked all around, nobody. Uh, and then all of a sudden, it literally sounded like a, a conversation coming from the next room, which was the ballroom. Uh, sounded like it was coming right out of thin air. And uh, one thing that struck us as amazing, but kind of scary is that in this field, a lot of times when you go towards things, it is like, hey, oh, you know, um, or, you know, it's just is over, even if it doesn't leave or, or whatever. So uh, whenever an experience happens, every investigator I know, myself included, that's the first thing that goes through your head. Do I go towards it? Do I lay off? What do I do? You, you don't know what to do. You want to go towards it as an investigator because you want to figure it out. But, you know, but in any case, we decided to go go in, you know, and as we went into this ballroom, uh, the voices just got louder and louder. And all of a sudden we were in the middle of them. They were in our faces loud. We couldn't really make out words, but we could literally hear conversations and partying and not partying like you would think of today. More like ballroom, fork and knife, loud. Like you could hear like shuffling on a floor. It was fantastic. And we were just like, didn't know what to do with each other. And this is the part here that uh, I'd never experienced anything like it before. And it sounds like anybody could, and, and whoever thinks of making this up, I don't care. I, I would think the same thing. Uh, so now we have to go through the kitchen. And as we're making our way through the kitchen, because the guy had told us to turn the porch and lock the door, we have to lock the door of this inn, you know. Uh, all of a sudden, all of the pots and pans to our left and our right just kept clanking and falling and flying off the thing. And I grabbed onto the back of Tango's shirt. <laughs> I did, it's a true story. And I was like, Dave, we got to turn that light off. And he's like, I'm not going. I'm like, we have to. And so we sort of just closed our eyes, walked through quickly. Uh, did it and I was like, You got it. He's like, Yep, yeah, turn the thing off. We turned back around and it was still happening. So we made our way back through it all with our eyes closed and sort of like, What do we do? This is crazy. We never saw or experienced anything like it. Um, and then we got back through the ballroom, the voices and everything still in there, like loud in our faces. So much so that I would go so far into it that it would now be behind me, you know. So, like, it's not like I just can't find the source. It's like, Wait, now it's behind me. What, what, like it's there. And so, um, I remember we get out to the main, which is like the living part. And I remember Dave Tang even said, Should we like go get our equipment and stuff? But it was like the sun was about to come up, and we're to be honest, kind of like a little unsettled. Um, and we, we drove home, yeah, in the, the taps van, even though it was just me and him. We were just there, we just stopped there ourselves for a night. Um, we didn't have anything like we didn't set up for that sort of thing. We weren't like investigating, even though we knew it was a haunted place and we'd already filmed there. We just stopped for the night. And that and happened. Where, where was this again, Steve? This is in the Berkshires in Massachusetts. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Buckstead Manor. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Terrifying. I went cool. at one point. Yeah. And, and I almost, I was like, hmm, you know, because you'd, you'd always want to have you know, grandiose thoughts and think I'll buy that place or whatever, you know, uh, and it did go for sale at one point. I was like, mm. uh, <laughs> I mean, but, are the spirits uh, going to pay rent? You know, like there's a lot of questions there. There's so. a lot of questions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Holy cow, yes. it, uh, but yeah, that happened. And that's one where Dave and I literally like 
I have to check myself with him. Like, hey, Dave. Yeah, man. (laughs) Yeah. And that really, like, that really, like, that's, like, yep. Yeah. And then this happened. Oh, my God. Like, (laughs) Yeah, uh, good sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, effing crazy. Okay. Well, um, on a different note, um, Danica, why don't we each ask maybe one or two more, then we'll go to the game. Yeah. Uh, so uh, obviously, yes. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the past year or so has been a little different, but prior, you've been a guest at multiple comic conventions. And I wanted to know maybe if there's been an interaction with a fan that stood out to you and also maybe if there's been a guest that you've been very excited to meet at a convention. Oh God, this, this question, is, I mean, this should have been the first question cause we'd still okay. be on it. We'd still okay. be like, <laughs> oh, and it would be now like, and then, so, all right. And then it would be uh, 745 already. <laughs> like, no, no, honestly, um, that's yeah. That that's happened quite a bit. You know, the, the fan interactions. Um, a, a lot of the standout, and of course, the the sentimental type of ones that you are like, oh my gosh. Um, uh, but uh, there, there are everybody is very very gracious and kind and and very sweet. Um, you know, sometimes uh, and meeting people is is just crazy. You know, especially being a, I'll, I'll do horror conventions sometimes and. You know, I'll be in line for somebody in, in the horror world who I've been with, and they'll like stand up and be like, "What are you doing? Like, get over here!" And I'm like, "Oh, what do you mean?" You know? <laughs> um, uh, I got to have dinner with uh, Bruce Campbell uh, pretty recently last year, uh, and that was pretty awesome. Uh, thanks, Mike, uh, for hooking that up. But it's, uh, yeah, that, was, that was pretty awesome. He, he taught us how to uh, drink properly, which is true. He he, he taught j- uh, Tango that. Uh, it's only Hendrix gin, and and it's got to be oh. with a, a slice of a cucumber, and you know the whole thing. Hendrix um, is really good. Yeah, to be that's fair. all thing I get stuff. I was like Hendrix, uh, but anyway, he couldn't have been cooler, nicer, gracious. You know, it was, you know, and I've read all his books, and I have heard all the stories. You know, but uh, he was uh, couldn't have been the uh, couldn't have been cooler, couldn't have been nicer, couldn't have been more gracious with his time, with his stories, with his interest in in me and tango it was very bizarre but it was That's super awesome. cool yeah and he, um, he has great suits we have to point out he's an oh, impeccable gosh. dresser yeah i mean he couldn't be any more handsome <laughs> you know it's, it's, it's pretty, uh, but he, he just he, honestly was super nice and even at the end it, it was almost like he was kind of looking you know sadly tango and i had to you know but he, at the end he's like so where, where are you guys going now like what, what's up now you know we're like oh and he's like oh, i'm not going back there so you guys you know <laughs> It was like, oh man, uh, but it was super awesome. Um, but yeah, that, that's happened. Fan interactions, you know, we get a lot of gifts, and and that's just like, oh my gosh, people have painted things for me, made blankets, um, yeah, and a lot of the stories, you know, I remember this one woman um, was like hugging on me, and and uh, her husband was like, oh, she hasn't left the house in like three years, and I was like, oh boy, you know, but, but then come to find out, it's because like her daughter is in a coma. And she hasn't left her side for three years, but had to come like meet me and say hi to me. And I'm like, you left your house, like your daughter's bedside, like for the first time in three years to meet me, schlep in the dark, <laughs> like <laughs> whatever. Um, so it's those types of things that you're like, ooh, we're doing, you know, we may have some flashlights and running around in the dark, but we're doing some bigger things here. Uh, and it's those types of things you're like, ooh. And, you know, we hear that every, every time, you know, and, and before the masks and, you know, we didn't get meet people in public when they just come up to you and that sort of thing. And, you know, they tell you those same types of stories. I had never liked my parents, but you know what? Every Wednesday or with Ghost Nation, you, you know, season one, every Friday now, it's, you know, uh, now we're Saturdays, you know, every Saturday, we that's when I get together and I have something to talk to my parents about. I have something to talk to my, like, that's the only thing me and my mom connect on or me and my dad. And it's like, oh, man, that's pretty cool. Um, so those are the types of things you're like, all right, there's something else, you know, going on here that's that's pretty cool. That's Definitely. all, you know. And the convention world is is so fun, you know. It's uh, a lot of great people. I miss seeing them, you know, the, the fans and mm-hmm. high fiving and and hugging and and saying what's up and hugging. What is uh, hugging? I know, is Never hugging? heard of it. But they would always ask, like, is it okay to hug you? And it's like, of course. Like, come on. I mean, now things might be a little different for a while. Who knows when conventions right. will be back in full swing we're hoping by the end hopefully of the summer soon. yeah hopefully soon uh, wow but yeah. lots of fun 
Yeah, I love, love that stuff. And uh, meeting those people, like you said, is always pretty intense, you know, and uh, whew, get nervous sure. for some of them. I get going, my heart gets all messed up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, I met Weird Al once. He was pretty awesome. His, his okay, manager wow. it up with. <laughs> But Weird Al is just, he literally just couldn't have been nicer, but he just goes, ghosts, huh? <laughs> just like, <laughs> back down. <laughs> like, yeah, uh -huh. like, you're like, oh, ghosts, huh? It's it's so funny. I feel like Weird Al gets brought up on the stream so much, and everyone just very like, often, just, right? Like, like everyone just, but us has met him somehow. Yeah, I met Danica. I met him at Spooky Empire. You listen. Where where is my chance? So that's just to you now. <laughs> so it's yeah, okay. Twenty twenty one, the year you meet Weird Al. Uh, Lauren okay. said that if she ever met you, she wants you to draw a ghost so she can get it tattooed on her. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, all right. Uh, I will, uh, but it might be terrible. Uh, that, <laughs> that's that what we all hope for <laughs> <laughs> there's one girl like came up well at one of like the last conventions she was like when i was like 19 you you drew a cat on my arm and she's like and i tattooed it on my and like and look and she's like 20 something now or whatever at the time and she's like look at it now it's there and i'm like i wish you had told me first like i would have drew something like i would at least put some, was it floor you know, was it your like, cat <laughs> no 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 it was uh whatever she's just like draw a cat did it so I, like, I would have put some effort into it if i knew you're gonna like now all the time she's like Steve drew that and it's some like crude. Ooh. Oh yeah. <laughs> See, I got mine. I got Alice Cooper and then yeah. he signed it. So I got that. I mean, people, you know, there's something about the permanence of meeting someone that you really love and admire and then having it forever. Uh yeah. Wendy wants to know if you'll take your hat off for us. Wendy? Okay, that's an interesting question. Hey. Oh, here we go. Hey, Leave me alone. Long. <laughs> it is getting long. I don't know what to do with it. It's like a you get into like man bun territory soon. <laughs> no <Yes>. way. <laughs> um, Danica, go back to the, I, uh, the whole Peaky Blinders cut. Oof. There you go. If I had the muscles, you can gel it back. The length that you've got <laughs> now, you can gel it back. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, Big like fan. <laughs> Danica, ask one more, and then we'll go to the game. All right, I have one very important question. What is it about Leslie Odom Jr. that is so magical? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, uh, of course, I was first exposed to him through Hamilton, you know, and then I looked through, you know, like most people who discovered him that way, uh, I'm sure went down that rabbit hole and uh, I've just soaked in everything. And, uh, you know, I'm still listening to his, his Christmas album, album here into, into January. And, and, you know, his voice is just. It's just, but, uh, I mean, exactly. But, uh, <laughs> it's in his acting, you know, I, Hamilton is everybody's fantastic. But when he's um, and you like, he that's Aaron. But I'm looking at Aaron without a doubt. Like, he's just so intense. And when he sings, wait for it, and he's just got that. And then, like, in, <clears throat> oh, dear Theodosia, when he's like, yeah, right yeah. in the beginning, he's kind of like searching for the words to say. And then he just, like, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I, yeah, he's I mean, an angel. This might not be your cup of tea, but I would also say, duh, his face. <laughs> oh, hey, he is this. very, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm he, drinking that tea. I don't know about Steve, <laughs> but like, yes. Uh, he's definitely uh, handsome, 100%. Uh, I mean, you, the way he dress, you see him all dressed up, and, and he, you know, it's, of course, yeah. He's, he's very one handsome. of the only people that I've ever said this about, but if I could, sorry, Nick. But if I could marry a person's voice, it's it's kind of a, it's like a three way tie right now. But that's that's not an offensive thing to say, Danica. It's, that's more than that's more than fine. My husband also, knows he's not a singer. <laughs> also, Steve, just letting you know, everyone in the comments right now is coming up with what your next haircut should be. I yeah. don't like. <laughs> Buzz cut, don't buzz cut, don't do a man bun, do a mohawk. And my favorite is you should go with the Jedi look. <laughs> Ooh. I mean, I it depends know. on what Jedi. Uh... Yeah, this is, I don't know. But okay, Steve, <laughs> do we have time to play the game of Would You Rather? Nope, I'm out of here. Okay, see you later. <laughs> Bye, Steve, see ya. <laughs> okay, so uh, Steve is, you know, you, you've played a couple Would You Rather games. This is a brand new one. Uh, whatever your answers may be, we'll accept it. If you want to tell us why you pick something, fantabulous. If not, that's fine too. All right, without any further ado, here is Would You Rather. Okay, Would You Rather witness a demonic possession or witness someone reanimate into a zombie? 
Gosh, that's a great question. Um, it, we're talking, of course, all this is real, right? Uh -huh, yeah. Yes. Real. Just pretend that that uh, makeup is accurate. Well done. Yes. <laughs> I'd say a, a practically a zombie because you could, uh, in essence, once it reanimates, you can put it back down and that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, uh, where a demon, once you, you get it in here, you know, if it's not bound by anything or, uh, you know, uh, who knows where it's going to go? Who knows yeah. what it's going to do? All of a sudden, that's in here now. We don't need to... Uh, Get out of here, you demon! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I pick a, a, a zombie. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Great. What are you next? next? Oh, 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 my gosh. At zombie. Least give me the zombie. Zombie. Okay. zombie. Without yeah, question. Yeah. yeah, because I'm, I'm probably going to be the it's like the Shaun of the Dead kind, though, so that, you know, you can blend in with the crowd and make your way through them. Woo! <laughs> no, I was going to say, if anything, I'm probably the one that would be demonically possessed. And like, that doesn't sound fun. Um, so zombie. Yeah. Zombie. <laughs> All right. Shamanica. All right. Would you rather sound like Seth Rogen when you laugh or sound like Fran Drescher when you laugh? Ooh, whoa. I'd say uh, probably Seth Rogen only because I'm a, I'm a guy. So it, like it would <laughs> like be a little even off -putting. more egregious probably, <laughs> you know, like, well, not only like it would just match; it wouldn't even match my my gender profile. <laughs> you know, so it'd be a little uh, uh, for me anyway. Uh, so I'd probably go Seth Rogen because at least I'd still sound like, you know, I could, uh, you know, hold on to that identity for me. You, you know that Steve Gonzalez, the paranormal investigator. You know, he sounds like Fran Jesher when he laughs. Like it's so we're we're still trying to figure it. Out. I think he's possessed by the demon of Fran. No, I, I, I mean, yeah. If that was my laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, Danica, would you, uh, Fran? Oh, um, no. <laughs> neither, neither is ideal. Um, I, I feel like I would be, I would be less offended by Seth Rogen's laugh, just on a day to day basis, like of knowing that that's what I sound like. I'd be like, oh, maybe that's the lesser of two evils at this point. <laughs> Fair enough. All <laughs> it's, right, it's a tough call. <laughs> All right. Both very unique, though. All right. Here's the next one. Would you rather enter a hot wing challenge or a pie eating contest? Ooh, pie. All day. <laughs> Ooh, pie. Oh, yeah. My, my, uh, like, I, I cheat uh, on my diet when I go to Disney, right? Uh, mm. that's As one should. <laughs> yes. And uh, in four years, I have never cheated for a savory item. It's always been a dessert. Um, so for me, desserts, that's my. I don't know. I mean, someday I'm sure I'll have a piece of pizza or a cheeseburger with the bun or something like that. How um, scandalous, Steve. I know. <laughs> with the bun. Um, <laughs> with the, um, but yeah, for me, it's always going to be ice creams, pies, cakes, donuts, um, anything baked, sweet, delicious, creamy, good. Mm. This is Hell yeah. <laughs> I know, right? But how are you delicious too, you know? But if I had a choice, I'd go pies. Mm. Okay. Next one. All right. Would you rather only be able to watch Marvel films or only be able to watch Star Wars films? Oh, how dare you! <laughs> um, this is going to draw I a mean, line in the sand for most of the audience. Yeah, there's no wrong answers. Yeah. If they were all, if all of the Star Wars films were on the level of, you know, uh, Empire Strikes Back and uh, Episode, you know, and maybe even The Mandalorian. If they were all on that level, Star Wars, no, no, no brainer. But as it stands right now, I could only watch three of the movies, you know. So <laughs> we don't talk about most of them. <laughs> yeah. So do I want to watch these three movies over and over again where all of the Marvel film excuse me, not Marvel. <laughs> all of the Marvel films. <laughs> um, you know, I, I may not want to jump off a bridge as, as quickly as you know, because if you're watching the same three movies for eternity, um you're going to want to bang Maddening. your head on the wall a few times. Yeah, you're going to yeah. you're going to go mad. You're going to want to like totally freeze yourself in some carbonite or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, see, I I would agree with you, but I'm also the girl that has the Death Star in her wrist. Ooh, but I got to go. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm also biased about Batista, so, you know. Mm, yeah. We love I have a Death Star too. Yeah. It's on my arm. Oh my that starts with um, <laughs> right. yeah, I think just for the, the, the catalog of it and the interest of mm -hmm. it. Um, but if they were all on the level of the three we all love uh, and the Mandalorian, because uh, mm -hmm. I mean, Mando. 
yeah. we ship him. Yeah. It's just so good. I love that mm -hmm. meme where it's like JJ Abrams. He's like, you'll, it's impossible. You'll never, you know, uh, uh, satisfy the, the, you know, the whole, the hardcore old school fans and the new ones at the same time. You'll never do it. It's impossible. And I just show like John Favreau with his feet up and like a cigar in his like, mouth. Like, hold my bear. <laughs> like, oh, baby oh, yeah. Yoda. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Finally figured out like a yeah. way to make everybody who loves Star Wars happy. Mm -hmm. And somehow he did it. Like, and I'm one of the old, you know, I'm, I'm uh, you know, one of the old school uh, fans, you know, the first mm -hmm. three. Uh, everything else just kind of loses me. I've seen them all. I'm just like, all right, next. All right. Let's it's see. okay. We don't talk about Hayden Christensen either. Yeah, so. I mean, <laughs> yeah, any of them. You know, just, uh, <laughs> sure, some of the acting's good. The effects can be good, all that. But it's nice. Oh, yeah. Jar Jar. <laughs> Love the guy. All right. <laughs> next one. <laughs> Woo, moving on. Oh. I'll Would you rather right. <laughs> have to walk on hot coals or do the polar bear swim? Hot coals. Same. Yeah. Same. Yeah. All the way. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely Easy. fuck that cold water. And then at the end of the hot coals, they serve us pie. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, a reward. A pie at the end. Yeah. Oh, and I it's outside it. of Disney. <laughs> I love that. Dreams are coming true. Whoa. And Leslie Odom G. Never mind. Okay. Next one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather... Have your likeness turned into a cartoon or have your likeness turned into a video game character? It's a good question. Uh, I feel like uh, the business brain in me says a cartoon would, uh, you know, bring more things in the business world, mm -hmm. longevity, that sort of thing, where a game could just be a in and out type of uh, thing there. Um, but I feel like right now I play more video games than I watch cartoons, so I'd say video game. Okay. What what are you currently playing, Steve? Uh, right now, I am playing the new Call of Duty, of course. Uh, I'm playing uh, the Star Wars, the Vader uh, on the Oculus. Mm. Uh, I've been playing that, Vader Immortal, I think it's called. Well, we won't tell Vader that you chose Marvel, so, like, you're good. <laughs> it's all still Disney, anyway. Yeah. My horse choked me in the game later. I know what you did! <laughs> I'm in my virtual reality. Put me down! Put me down! I was just kidding. You weren't supposed to watch. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Awesome. All right. Next one. Tell me. Uh, oh, gosh. Would you rather see a Muppet version of Hamilton or a Muppet version of Beetlejuice? Hi ho. <laughs> um, uh, Beetlejuice. Yeah. I ah. think so. I think that'd be fun. Okay. Um, now, what Muppet is. I, I can't really tell what Muppet that is. Is that supposed to be Elmo? As like a. No. Are you sure? Because you're one of those build a Muppets. Okay, so like who, which Muppet would be Beetlejuice? That's the, the question. Oh, um, that's a good, who's the guy with the uh, the gold tooth? Oh, the singer of the band? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I forget hmm. his name. I know Janice is the girl, Dr. Right. Tooth and Mayhem. Dr. Tooth. Is it yeah. Dr. Tooth? Yeah. yeah. Dr. Yeah. Mayhem. <laughs> uh, Electric Mayhem is the band. Do Dr. Tooth. Not Animal? Teeth. Animal's animal the drummer. Can. Oh, yeah. Animal would be good. But I don't feel like he would actually say the words. Yeah. They, Welcome to a show about I don't know, like <laughs> it's a terrible animal fair, impression. Fair, just fair. we'll just go with that. Pretty much okay. a grunt. But he he would fit the character, dye his hair. Yeah. He'd look like that. He'd look like that. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. Here's the next one. Would you rather okay, so this is for social distancing purposes, wear a Michael Myers mask or a ghost face mask? Michael Myers, of course. Mm. Oh Iconic. yeah. Hands down. Um Scream One's pretty good, you know. Um, I, I can't talk ill of, of other people's movies because, or anybody's, you know, somebody somewhere put a lot of love into those movies and, you know, whether it be a cast member, somebody's going to, you know, you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but um, I don't think there's any comparison between the two. Uh, what about you guys? Uh, uh, Michael Myers, but I am very excited about Scream 5. I'm very much looking forward to it. <laughs> One more year from a couple days ago. So... I don't know. I feel like they're going to reinvent it. And the fact that they have David Arquette and Courtney um, Cox without yeah. the bangs were golden. <laughs> if she yeah. had the bangs, different story. We're bangless. So, yeah. <laughs> Danica? I think I'd actually go with Ghostface just because then it feels it's a little more private. Oh, because you also get the cape. <laughs> and just, yeah, I get like a little hood. Mm -hmm. It's just nice and private. Why the long <laughs> face? Okay. Oh, gosh. Lauren's throwing in a question. Oh, original my. Halloween or Rob Zombie Halloween? Lauren, okay. Oh, original for me. Yeah, OG. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, gee. Even though I do love Rob Zombie, I yes. The, I was going to say I prefer his music, but I don't know if that's the case because I really mm. love Devil's Rejects. That is yeah. my jam. Mm. But all right, I think we have a few more. Sorry, we don't want to keep you forever, Steve. Oh, oh this is the last, last one. one. Would you rather be summoned to do an investigation at a Disney park or summoned to do an investigation at Alcatraz? Oh, well, luckily I have already investigated Alcatraz. Uh, we did a live show from Alcatraz once. It was pretty dang awesome. Um, and the guy there, he was a park ranger and he hated me. I don't know why. He hated my guts. Um, because he was possessed by a demon. <laughs> no, I don't know, but... Um, <laughs> It was kind of funny. He just was always like, give me dirty looks. And then at one point, it was like, the only thing allowed down here is water. It was one of two park rangers, this one guy. He kind of had it out for me. And um, I'm like, all right. And I put some like emergency in my water because I was like, you know, just wanted to get it down fast and have some because you're breathing all this dust all night. Mm -hmm. And so my water was a little yellow and he gets in my face and he's like, I said just water. And I was like, well, it's just, I just put vitamins in there. And he's like, and that makes it no longer water. And I was like, incorrect. Um, okay, <laughs> wrong. And then uh, I remember at the end, we're all walking back to the boat or whatever. And he's like, I heard one of you guys used to be a police officer. Who was it? And like everybody points to me, Steve. And he looks at me, he goes, this a hole? Like calls me an a hole. What? I go, me? Like I didn't do anything. Like, what's wrong with you? Anyway, that was my That's experience awful. investigating Alcatraz. <laughs> and you've never had vitamin C tablets again. Oh, the I've never had vitamin end. C tablets again. Um, it was wow. actually an amazing investigation, and we had a lot of fun. Um, it was really, really fun. Uh, I'd love to go back to investigate, but since I've already investigated it, uh, I would pick something at, at Disney. Yeah. Fair enough. Or would so, you rather go back there if that park ranger is not there? Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, he, I'm sure maybe you never know what somebody is going through in their day. You know, maybe yes. he like, I don't know, something terrible could have happened to him in that morning. And I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I reminded him of I, who I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but you yeah, if he's not there, I'll, I'll go back. <laughs> so b before we wrap this up, um, there was one question we wanted to get to really quick. Um, what is your go to Starbucks drink? Oh, what's, uh, what's the Steve Gonzalez that we can go in and be like, we want that. Uh, Trenta iced coffee. No classic with mm. heavy cream. That's it. That is almost identical to what my husband gets. Really? Hey, yeah. high five. Mm -hmm. I've had coffee once. <laughs> it, it was, coffee I had coffee with the nectar of life. <laughs> one Three time at a, at a convention, Dave Ellison, who's the basis for Megadeth, makes his own brand of coffee and it was coffee. I can't, I, I can't give an accurate, I don't know what coffee is supposed to taste like. It was probably it delicious. Was, I'm it's sure. Rad. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Steve, before you wrap this up, any final thoughts you want to leave us with here? Yes, uh, new episodes of Ghost Nation. You can watch every Saturday on Discovery Plus. Uh, yeah, and of course, the, the House in Between is a documentary that is available everywhere and free for Prime members right now. So, uh, yeah, and we're excited to uh, get moving back uh, and, and get back to our investigations in just a month or so uh, as soon as a lot of this COVID here dies down. We'll be back to it. So thank you for having me, guys. Yay, a lot of Steve, fun. Steve, thank you. You're a little fun. angel. We really appreciate you being here. And hopefully time number six, we'll have to talk. Yeah. Bye. Let me know. Sounds awesome. Let me know. Cool. Okay. See you. Uh, yeah, we did it, guys. We'll see you guys on, what's today? Tuesday. We'll see you guys on Thursday. Okay. Be safe, Yay. everybody. Au <laughs> revoir. Well,